Now we're going to talk about some bond energies and what happens when we form bonds and what happens when we break bonds. So let's look at this right here, the first one, which is a drawing of a compound. And we want to break this compound into its individual atoms. So in order to do so, this compound is linked to its individual atoms through a bond and in order to break this compound we have to provide energy in order to break the bond so we want to break this bond and form the individual atoms and in order to do that we said we have to provide energy so therefore this means that the reaction is an endothermic reaction and an endothermic reaction is a reaction that requires energy for it to proceed now let's look at the opposite of this right here okay so what happens if we want to form bonds okay we want to form this compound right here okay well the opposite of breaking bonds is gonna happen but in this case we don't have to provide any energy what happens is when atoms combine together energy is released so therefore this reaction is an exothermic reaction and exothermic reactions are reactions that release energy when they proceed to completion now let's clarify this using a graph and you guys have to know this graph off by heart because the examiner would ask you about certain things I'm gonna point it out for you guys but bear with me okay so this graph right here is a graph of energy versus process and here we have our products at uh, 10 kilojoules and our reactants are at 100 kilojoules now let's calculate the delta energy of the reaction or the delta H which would be H of the products minus H of the reactants and that would be 10 minus 100 which would give us minus 90 kilojoules and listen to this and pay attention any reaction that has a negative delta H is directly an exothermic reaction blindly without thinking a reaction that has a negative delta H is an exothermic reaction okay now let's see how will this graph go now the reaction starts like this and then it booms it has the most energy and then it falls to the product okay now let's see this distance right here this distance is the activation energy but what is activation energy activation energy is the energy required to start the reaction or to activate the reaction okay the reaction okay now what's this distance right here it's the distance between the reactants and the products which is 100 minus 10 which is the same as delta H so this is exactly what it is it's delta H this distance is delta H now let's look at the graph on the right now we have our reactants at 10 kilojoules and our products at 100 kilojoules now let's calculate similarly delta H delta H would be H of products minus H of reactants and that would be 100 minus 10 which is positive 90 kilojoules and similarly also any reaction that has a positive delta H is an endothermic reaction blindly without thinking okay so now let's see how the graph goes so it starts like this up 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 and then it booms and then it falls to the product now let's look at this now the activation energy is the distance between the reactants and the highest point in the graph so that would be the activation energy 
okay? And delta H would be the difference between the reactants and the products. So that's delta H. Okay? Easy enough, right? So, to conclude. Now, to conclude what we did here, I know it's a mess and a lot of information to take in. But, let's take a look. The first graph we looked at is a graph of an exothermic reaction and we said that the reactants are at a higher energy than the products and we outlined the different distances which here this this is the activation energy and the delta h and we know how to calculate delta h using this equation now the second graph we looked at the reactants are at a lower energy than the products and also this has a higher activation energy than the other graph okay and we know the different distances and we calculated delta h now to recap all this you guys have to know the graph off by heart if you need to draw the graph, but I don't think they're going to ask you to do that if you need to draw any graphs you have to label your axes clearly and I hope this have made it clear for you guys so stay tuned I'm gonna be providing some examples from past papers and we're gonna solve it together in order to uh, make it more clear and stuff like that so good luck and see you guys in the next video